Okay, here's the situation. This power supply is once again disappointing me, but despite that, I still have a couple of things that I want to show in this demonstration that I think might be usable concepts for some of you guys. First off, um, the first topic is the circulator pump. Now, my plan was to use this pump to regulate the amount of current that's flowing through this dry cell right here. But because this training pack sets a piece of junk, it's only going to be limited in its response. But anyway, here goes. We're going to check it out. Now, to start without the pump, I'm at about 16, 15 amps right now. Pump on to 50%. That kicks my amperage up to 20 amps. I'm going to kick the pump on to 100%. Now up to 25 amps, 24.4 amps. So we just witnessed a 7.5 amp or so response. And just to show you on full blast, this is the gas production I'm getting. Uh, well, you can see that. Find a sweet spot there. pretty big bubbles there is a vapor still coming out of this gas right here that you can see so I can see why hooking up two or three bubbles bubblers would be a good idea starts out 48 amps when I first turn on the switch there's that I believe my battery is dying on me over here showing that it's down at 25%, but either way, I'm going to go ahead and post this video um, just to kind of give you guys an idea of how things went. It's been, it took me two days to get to this point with all this, and I'm definitely liking this um, splash unit I put in here. I wanted to try to bring down the amount of splash and bubbles that's taking place inside here so it don't fly up in my hose. This is just a temporary rig to bench test this. This will eventually go in my welding torch, or my hydrogen torch, I should say. I definitely don't weld with it. So, I'm glad that uh, you guys with the dry cells have led me in this direction because this little thing is awesome. The cooling fins, leaving the um, plates long to double as cooling fins, was just completely awesome. They totally dissipate heat. I don't know if you can see any of that. I don't have the fans fired up right now, but because the pump train pack can't run both very well. But uh, the C clamp route was just to get me out of drilling a bunch of holes, and I couldn't find a big enough piece of plexiglass, so that's why you see the C clamps. I kind of like them anyway, though. They're a lot easier than drilling, and they only cost about a dollar forty a piece. So there it is. Uh, Pump flow regulated, um, let me know because um, I understand that there is such a thing called a PMW that you can use to run a cell, but I'm not going that route. They're too complicated to build on my own, and I certainly ain't going to buy one. So for now, this little pump setup has given me only about 7.5 amps worth of power control. So when it comes to a point... When, in, when we need to start dialing in gas flow and all this over durations, it's this may be something that might help. Same thing with the uh, bubbler height. But anyway, I'm going to end this here. Just wanted to post it. Um, and then another thing. I noticed that a critical point is reached with electrolyte and where adding more only promotes a secondary reaction that creates this purple substance the water becomes purple and it seems to put off a different gas if anyone knows anything about this purple substance or what it might be or if you've seen it yourself um, post a comment on that I'm definitely trying to figure okay so here's two days worth I finally got a dry cell going I'm sick of all the transformers and diodes and all that so what I got going on here 
is a dry cell that I've left the fins just a little bit long so they double as cooling fins and I got two electrodes and four neutral plates and on every corner of my end plates I have an electrode hooked on there with these uh, special little brass pieces that I made and I was able to get solder to solder onto that stainless steel you got to get a red hot inside of this bubbler canister I got this pipe and I'm gonna fill this fluid level to about a quarter inch below that pipe and inside of that pipe is a porous a kind of a porous spongy substance it's, it's like really big holes though and that's gonna stop the um, velocity of the liquid spraying through here down to a dribble hopefully and I'm gonna try to keep a fairly small reservoir of gas in there so I don't really ain't gonna be using a bubbler on this particular one I hope that works out okay but I'll go over some other elements of this thing here basically what I'm doing is I got a battery in here and a battery charger so I will be running the system on DC current which from a battery which is a lot cleaner a lot higher quality of a current uh, there was a guy on the internet recently talking about current quality and I do agree with him that batteries definitely supply some of the best current you do I also have a cooling fan over each electrode area kind of I, I plan on cranking at least a hundred amps through this thing that's my goal anyway maybe even more so hopefully we'll see some serious performance here. I got a water bottle and um, we'll be hooking the top up. Here's the top. I wanted to throw a pressure gauge on there because sometimes back pressure build up while you're welding can creep up on you and just blow everything apart. So I definitely am not going to be running one of these cells without a pressure gauge on it. So that's that. Um, I'm hoping that um, this pump will enable me to regulate the amount of amperage this thing holds. And I hope leaving these cooling fins long will um, help mitigate the heating issue. I talked to Smart Scarecrow about this device. I, uh, we talked about it a couple times actually. And from what he's told me, I should have about 2.4 volts per plate gap. But we're going to be testing all that. I hit the jackpot at Noonan's True Value. I got this plumber's gasket kit. It comes with... Uh, Big old flat sheets of this that are the same size of these. It comes with paper and a cork piece. Yeah. I finally broke down and started on my first dry cell. This is what I did to the gaskets. You can see I made the holes. Crooked. I wanted that flow to kind of stagger in there to sort of force the fluid into the plates rather than just pass right through. I also left my edges long so they could double as heating fins or cooling fins, I mean. I'm retarded. So that's the inside of it. I'm going to be using this chopping block piece as my top and C-clamps to hold together. I also forgot to mention that one of the ways I cut this stainless steel was with a pair of snips. But the way I did it was a trick that I came up with um, that I want to share with you because it really helped out a lot. Cutting stainless steel is some dirty business. So what I did was I took the snips and put the metal inside of there and then put this part of my snips in the vise and just crank the vise closed and it just snaps right through it. So I just wanted to share that with you because that definitely was a pretty cool thing that I found out. Um, saved me a lot of time and trouble and I didn't have to breathe any nasty vapors. And I wanted to get some shots of this before I mount it. And I wanted to show I knew that you could silver solder stainless steel, but I have some non-lead solder. And I don't know if you can see that, but I did manage to get it to solder on here. I have my electrodes hooked up a little bit different than what you might typically see, but I hope this will carry the amperage I have 
four electrodes per each end plate. 